This talk is an overview of substance intoxication and withdrawal syndromes and their management. In this talk, I'll outline the intoxication and withdrawal syndromes for the substances listed here, which are those that would typically be screened for during an emergency psychiatric evaluation. I'll also briefly outline treatment for each syndrome. For each intoxication syndrome, I'll present a visual that encompasses a characteristic eye feature and behavioral feature of the syndrome to help you anchor your knowledge. For example, for alcohol and benzos, which share a similar intoxication syndrome, the key eye characteristic is nystagmus, and the key behavioral characteristic is ataxia. These are represented in the visual to the right, which shows an eye with horizontal nystagmus, and the motion lines around the eye represent unsteadiness or ataxia. The blue arrow represents parasympathetic nervous system activation, which manifests as decreases in heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. By contrast, a red arrow will represent sympathetic nervous system activation, which manifests as increases in these vital signs. I'll also point out that the general treatment for any kind of substance intoxication involves supportive care, such as IV fluid hydration, and measures to prevent further absorption of the ingested substance, such as gastric lavage or activated charcoal. In addition to these measures, for benzodiazepine intoxication, the specific antidote is flumazenil. Opioid intoxication involves meiosis, or pupil constriction, and apathy. In severe cases, this depressed mental status can progress to coma and unresponsiveness. Decreased respiratory rate is a key vital sign. The specific antidote is naloxone. Stimulant intoxication, such as with cocaine or methamphetamine, involves mydriasis, or pupil dilation, and agitation. Sympathetic activation leads to vital sign elevation. There is no specific antidote, but benzos can help calm the associated agitation and sympathetic activation. Cannabis intoxication involves red eyes, also known as conjunctival injection, and euphoria. Although cannabis has both depressant and stimulant properties, in intoxication, it usually causes sympathetic activation. There is no specific antidote, but again, benzos can help symptomatically. The only hallucinogen tested for on a standard urine drug screen is fencyclidine, or PCP. PCP intoxication involves nystagmus and aggression, as well as sympathetic activation. Once again, benzos can help calm aggression. Next, let's move on to the withdrawal syndromes. For the most part, withdrawal syndromes will look like the opposite of the intoxication syndromes. For example, while alcohol intoxication involves mental status depression, alcohol withdrawal involves anxiety and agitation, along with other signs of sympathetic activation, such as tremor and diaphoresis. Keep in mind that alcohol and benzo withdrawal are the only withdrawal syndrome that is life-threatening, as it can lead to seizures as well as other severe symptoms such as alcoholic hallucinosis and delirium tremens. The treatment for alcohol withdrawal involves monitoring symptoms with the CWA scale, treating with long-acting benzodiazepines as needed to ease withdrawal symptoms, and repleting nutrition with thiamine, folate, and dextrose. Opioid withdrawal involves irritability, GI distress, including frequent diarrhea and vomiting, and flu-like symptoms such as muscle aches and rhinorrhea. Although not life-threatening, it is extremely uncomfortable, and monitored withdrawal in a controlled setting is often indicated. This involves monitoring symptoms with a cow scale, easing withdrawal with buprenorphine, and using other PRN medications for control of specific symptoms. Stimulant withdrawal is often described as a crash, involving dysphoria, fatigue, and overall slowing. There is no specific treatment, and therefore it is managed symptomatically. Cannabis withdrawal involves irritability, dysphoria, and insomnia, among other symptoms. Treatments with some evidence for easing withdrawal include the THC derivatives dronabinol and nabiximol, as well as gabapentin. Finally, PCP withdrawal is similar to stimulant withdrawal, with dysphoria, fatigue, and persistent thought disturbance, among other symptoms. There is no specific treatment, so it is managed symptomatically. That's the end of this talk. I hope this is a useful big picture review of these syndromes. Thank you.